Thank you. Praise the Lord. God will answer your prayer. Because if there's anything that is certain, it is this, that God still answers prayer. And tonight will be that night when that mountain in your life, in your ministry, in your family, and the things that bother you, and you have been asking, how will this happen? How will that happen? Tonight, God still answers prayer. My prayers are answered. Say that for yourself. My prayers are answered. Be it confirmed in heaven, in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name and glorify you. Thank you, Lord, because of your goodness. You are the God that has not changed. You are the God the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know everyone. You know every situation. And Lord, you have come to roll the bodies of your people away. I pray that every minister, every ministry, every worker, every family, everyone here and all over the world, I pray as we connect with the God of heaven, you'll answer prayers tonight with miraculous wonders in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that in the blessing of the Lord. We're coming to Jonah chapter 1. And I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Jonah chapter 2. Reading from verse 1 and verse 2. Then Jonah prayed. It was in the whale's belly. You couldn't tell the direction it was. East or west, north or south. He couldn't tell the position in the sea because it was inside. There was no light even there. And it was surrounded by quite a lot of things. It was strange. He had never been in a situation like that before. Yet, Jonah prayed. Was he kneeling down? Was he standing up? Was he lying down? The position did not matter. It's not our kneeling, it's not our standing, it's not our lying, it's not our rolling on the ground. The position does not matter. God answers prayer. Was he able to talk aloud at all? Because he was in the bellies, in the belly of the whale. And yet, whether silent or loud, whether crying or sobbing, whatever the condition, God answers prayer. How was his emotion? Was he filled with shame? Was he filled with fear? Was he filled with regrets? Whatever his emotion, Jonah preached unto the Lord. It's God. And I'm coming to tell you that you're standing, you're kneeling, you're sitting, you're lying down. God answers prayer. You're fearful. You feel ashamed. You have suffered unnecessarily. You have regrets in your life. Why did I do that? Why did I rebel? God answers prayer. What a great thing to know that all alone by himself, without any prayer partner, without anybody supporting him, without anybody able to lay hands on him, without anybody even knowing where he is, where is he now? Is he alive? Is he dead? Yet Jonah prayed. Anytime you get into a situation where you cannot tell where I am, what have I done? Why did I do that? And what am I going to do now? I don't even have a Bible in my hand. And it is not the time for church service. Whatever the situation, remember, in that condition, Jonah prayed. Look at that word, then. Then. That means it's a word that marks time. When it says then, he was sleeping in the ship that time, no prayer. And eventually they cast him into the sea. And a whale received him, swallowed him up. 
where was the will take him to? He was ignorant. He didn't know what the punishment of the past, where it will end. And what the journey, the past to the future, where it will end. But then he said, when everything fails, and when I cannot touch anyone, no friends, no family, no fellowship, nothing, then at such a time, Jonah prayed. And the Lord answers prayer. That's how the Lord will answer your prayer tonight. And he prayed unto the Lord. He didn't pray to any other God. He prayed to that same God he was running away from. As you look at Jonah, you see that running and hiding was the major thing in his life. In chapter 1, he was running away from God. In chapter 2, he was running unto God. In chapter 3, he was running for God. Unfortunately, in chapter 4, he was running against God. At this time, the running man, the prodigal man, the, prodig the, the backsliding man prayed. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God. He said, I return. He is now my God. My God. He had faith in him. You can have faith in God in any situation where you are. In any predicament you put yourself into. He was suffering. He was uh, hidden there in the whale's belly. He said, it's still my God. And Jonah prayed unto the Lord. It's God out of the fish's belly. And then he says in verse 2. Look at verse 2 there and said, I cried by reason of my affliction. Many things lead us to pray. We might pray because we see the promises of the Bible and we're so excited and happy. Look at the promises and because of that, I go to pray. We might pray because of the pain, because of the plague, because of affliction, and because of something that came upon us and we do not know the way out. Whatever leads us to the Lord, whether pain or promise, whether joy or sadness, whether grief or grace, whatever leads us to the Lord, one thing we know, God is always there and is expecting us and God will answer your prayer. He said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord and he heard me, he heard me, he heard me. God, the God of heaven, heard the man. He was praying in the depths of the sea, at the bottom of the mountains, and inside the whale's belly. And he said, and he heard me. And he said, out of the belly of hell. Out of the belly of hell, he couldn't describe where he was in any other way. He said, I was literally in the belly of hell no hope no help no future and he didn't know what will happen but he said all the same the eternal god all the same the everlasting god i'm going to call upon him out of the belly of hell cried i and again he says now and thou heardest my voice if he heard jonah at that time in that place, in that situation, without any hope of coming out of the belly of hell, if he had Jonah, he will hear you. He will answer your prayer. He had Jonah at that time. And today, our God eternal, our God everlasting, our God who has not changed, who will never change from generation to generation and from century to century and from this side to that side and from the Old Testament to the New Testament, generations everywhere, anywhere, anytime, God had him, God will hear you. What are you thinking about your condition at this time? Where are you? Where have you been? What are you going through? Nobody understands me. Nobody understood Jonah or his condition. But all the same, people understand. People do not understand. 
God heard his prayer. I thank God tonight he will hear your prayer. I'm talking to you tonight on the secret of miraculous answers to prayer. The secret of miraculous answers to prayer. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the shorty of miraculous, undeniable answers to prayer. The shorty, the assurance of miraculous, undeniable answers to prayer. Number two is the secret of many unanswered prayers. Why are prayers not answered for people? We pray, we fast, we read, we dedicate time apart, and we go to a prayer retreat, and we say, all we're going to do here is pray. And yet, there are times for the prayer retreat, there are times in personal denial that we even take time, we wait upon the Lord, and there is no answer. The question is why? The secret of many unanswered prayers. Now, number three, the spontaneousness of marvelous answers to prayer. When God answers suddenly and instantaneously and spontaneously, a miraculous answer comes from heaven. The spontaneousness of marvelous answers to prayer. Let's come to number one. Number one is the shorty of miraculous, undeniable answers to prayer. Obviously, we know that the answer to the prayer of Jonah is undeniable. He was on that side, going that direction, swallowed up by the whale inside the sea and now we find him later on the good side of Nineveh and that was at the shore obviously a man down and now we see him up a man swallowed up we now see him release a man that had been inside the belly of hell. Now it comes to the open, and we know that this man he is a miracle himself, the shorty of miraculous, undeniable answers to prayer. Look at Jonah chapter 2. We're looking at verses 6 and 7. In verse 6, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. That's what he thought. He said, this suffering might lead to a forever kind of suffering. He said, yet as thou brought me up, I went down. The God of heaven brought me up. The Lord is able to reverse every negative situation in your life. And he will. I said he will. Yeah. That was brought up my life from corruption. Oh Lord, my God. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee. My prayer came in unto thee. From any direction, anywhere in the world. Whether on land, on sea, in the sea, up on the mountain, deep in the valley, and in the belly of hell itself. Anywhere prayer is prayed in the whole universe, that prayer goes to the Lord. It said, my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. We're dividing this part to three uh, sections. Number one, the earnest passion of an afflicted, awakened soul. If anybody ever got awakened, Jonah was awakened. He was awakened to a situation. He was awakened to his trouble. He was awakened to what could have led to eternal suffering. And then he became passionate. Even though it was an affliction, that affliction woke him up, awakened him, and he had earnest passion in prayer. The earnest passion of an awakened 
afflicted soul. Number two, the effectual pain of an apprehended agonizing sufferer. He was suffering and he was in agony. The agony of the punishment that came on him. And the pain was effectual. The pain was effective. It was that pain that led him to pray. And it was that pain that made him to have faith in the only one God that could deliver. Number three, the elevating prayer of an appreciative agreeable servant he came to the to the place he appreciated god now a great god a merciful god a god that will have the final say he appreciated now who god is and was agreeable with the, the, with the god of heaven he said lord i agree with you you are all power and you are all mighty and you are all sufficient all your attributes now i agree where he was brought him into that agreement with god and appreciation of god the elevating prayer of an appreciative agreeable servant let's come to number one number one is the honest passion of an afflicted awakening so i can tell you that jonah was not dozing when he was praying this prayer. He wasn't sleeping, slumbering when he was praying this prayer. Affliction has a way of making us passionate. Affliction has a way of making us praying a kind of prayer with real conviction. There's no absent-mindedness here now when Jonah was praying. The earnest passion of an afflicted, awakened soul. Look at Isaiah chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 9. Oh, see, uh, sorry, uh, Isaiah chapter 26, in verse 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, in the night of affliction. In the night of trouble, in the night of confusion, in the night of sickness, in the night of pain, in the night when everything turned upside down with my soul, have I uh, desired thee in the night, yea, with my soul within me, will I seek thee early. Look at this, for when thy judgments are in the earth, when thy judgments and the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. That's what happened to him. The judgment of God was upon him here on earth. And he said, what else can I say? This is the hand of God. And this is the provision of God. And this is the punishment coming from God. When thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. That's what he learned, and that is why he prayed a passionate prayer. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. Pet him, pat him at the back. The wicked man smile at him and tell him, you know, God loves you. Everybody loves you. The church loves you. And the church wants this. The wicked man continues in his wickedness. When we show them the love of God like that. But like Jonah. Jonah, when all the things were working well, he paid the price. And then he was in the ship. They were going to touch it. It was like everything was all right. He could even go to sleep. He says, let favor be showed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of the upright? Will he deal unjustly? And will not behold the majesty of the Lord. But now in affliction, he was awakened. In affliction, he prayed. In affliction, he manifested passion, earnest passion that made him to cry unto the Lord. Look at the next point there. Point number two there. The effectual pain of an apprehended 
arrested, agonizing, sufferer. The Lord apprehended him. And the Lord arrested him. And the Lord said, now it's you and I. No sheep here. That's my will. And that my will will do my will. If I tell that will to eat you up, you are finished. This is me and you. And because the man was arrested and the man was apprehended, he now had agony in the heart. Why did I do what I did? And I was told in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 3, For thou hast cast me into the deep, not the sailors, not the sheep masters, thou, the God of heaven, because you knew my heart of rebellion and you wanted to kill me. This is bitter medicine. I never knew that a medicine like this would be applied to my sick, sin soul. And then he says, it's thou, you have cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compass me about all thy billows and thy waves. The billows are thine, the waves are thine. The wind is thine, the whale is thine, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. And then he says in verse 4, in verse 4, then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. I'm cast out of thy sight. Foolishly, I myself ran away from your presence. And now it's like you are saying, you want to leave my presence? You want to do the undoable? All right. I give you a chance. And I cast you out. And the man said, I wanted to get away from God now. He has abandoned me. And the pain is unbearable. You know, sometimes when you want to go a particular way, and that way is not the way that God has ordained. And the Lord says, that's what you want. You want to be away from me so that you can do whatever you want to do and you get away from my control. All right, have your own way. The man now said, this is painful. This is unbearable. I thought it would be all right if I ran away. Now he said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. I cannot look back. There's no hope there. I cannot look to man. There's no hope there. I cannot look to any situation. There's no hope there. I cannot look at the works of my hand. Because could my tears forever flow. And my zeal no respite no. All these for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone. In your plan of redemption. Thou and thou alone must save. Because of that yet. I will look again. I didn't understand when you say. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved. I didn't understand when you said, In me is your salvation, in me is your redemption. Now I understand, and I will look again toward thy holy temple. You see, when people are apprehended like that, and when people are arrested by God, and they get into agonizing pain, then they seek the Lord in Second Chronicles chapter 33. We're looking at verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 9. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, to go astray, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, and the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they will not hack in. There was peace, there was prosperity, and there was some stability. Everything was all right. And then in that peaceful condition, God sent his servant and spoke unto Manasseh and to the people. And because no problem, 
because there is ease because there was peace they will not hack him look at verse 11 in verse 11 wherefore the lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of assyria which took manasseh among the sons and bound him with fetters and carried him to babylon then verse 12 and when he was in affliction, when he was in affliction, God has many messengers. He has a messenger of mercy. His name is called mercy. And he comes and says, God sent me to you. He has mercy on you. And he wants you to turn and repent. The messenger mercy. God has a messenger. His name is compassion. And he says, the messenger compassion. God has sent me to you. He wants to have compassion on you. God has a messenger. The name is love. And God sends that messenger love. But the people were not listening. But he has other messengers. And he has a messenger called affliction. He has a messenger called trouble. He has a messenger called trauma. And now he sends the affliction. When he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. If they will not listen to the messenger of mercy and compassion and love, then they will answer when he says the other messengers. And those messengers, affliction, suffering, and sickness, they don't have any mercy. They come and they cause pain. And when that other messenger, the messenger of affliction, now came to Manasseh and to the people, the listen. Look at verse 13. It says in verse 13, I'm prayed unto him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his country into his kingdom God answers prayer I said God answers prayer whatever messenger has come if he sent the messenger of mercy he'll say yes Lord he'll answer your prayer he sends the messenger of compassion you say yes Lord he'll answer your prayer he sends the messenger of love and you say yes Lord he'll answer your prayer but if you have gone so far that you are not listening to those messengers positive then he sends the messenger the name is affliction as you hear, you'll still answer your prayer. I said, you'll still answer your prayer. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. We're coming to number three. Number three, the elevating prayer of an appreciative, agreeable servant. The prayer that elevated him. When other things fail, and other things are going to fail, there are times when money will fail. There are times when contacts will fail. There are times when human health and human medicine will fail. There are times when science will fail. There are times when all the knowledge you've had as a person that had gone and you're deep in knowledge, there are times when the knowledge will fail, when everything on earth will fail, and there is one that cannot fail. His name is the Almighty God. God will never fail. I said God will never fail. And when every other sin has failed in our lives, God will rise up for you, for me, for us, and the power of God will work in your life without any limitation. And tonight is that night. Are you there? Where are you? Tonight is your night. That power will work in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Jonah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. The water has come past me about even to the soul the depths closed me round about the weeds were wrapped about my head and then in verse 6 in verse 6 it says i went down to the bottoms of the mountains the earth with her bars was about me forever yet 
Thou hast brought me up my life from corruption. O Lord my God. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. When my soul fainted within me, no friend, no sympathizer, no companion. When my soul fainted within me, no hope even. Everything was upside down. And when I came to the end of my ropes, when I came to the end of my running, and all my energy, everything fizzled out. All my power, everything was strange. And when I came to the very bottom and I couldn't go any further, then I remembered the Lord. When everything has failed, that's the time for us to remember God. And God is such a merciful God. He will turn everything around for the better in our lives in our families, in our ministries, in Jesus' name. Those tears, he'll wipe those tears away. All those conditions, embarrassing conditions. He will take care of everything. And my prayer came in unto thee. My prayer came, Jonah himself could not rise up and go to God where we cannot travel to. Our prayer will travel there. Amen. Who we cannot contact, our prayer will contact that personality. When it appears that place is so high, I cannot get there, pray. Your prayer will get there. That thing is so deep, I cannot make it pray. Your prayer will go to those set places. And when somebody might even be a personality here on earth, and you know that he is in position to handle something. But you are afraid you cannot get to him. Your prayer will get to him. Our prayer tonight will get to him. It says, and my prayer came in unto thee. Look at that word in. My prayer came in unto thee. We cannot go through closed doors, but our prayers can go through closed doors. We cannot go through all the places they said, you know, real security. We cannot get there. Our prayers will penetrate that place. And tonight, I want you to understand, as you open your mouth, and as you pray, and as you tell the Lord, I can't get there. I send my prayer there. I can't get up there. I send my prayer there. I can't go down deep there. I send my prayer there. Thank God your prayers will speak for you. Amen. Will enter for you. And that means then there's no situation where we can find ourselves. And then we say, I cannot, I cannot. The Lord himself has made a way that where you cannot get to, your prayer will get there. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the secret of many unanswered prayers. Why? If God is so merciful, if God is so compassionate, if God is so loving, and if God is willing, and if God is ready, why is it that sometimes we find prayers unanswered? We're coming to Jonah chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 8. Jonah chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. The mercy is there, always there. And the mercy is a kind of marvelous as well as manifold. And even though we have manifold mercies awaiting marvelous mercy, awaiting miraculous mercy, awaiting, yet it says they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Look at three things here. Number one, 
We're looking at the observation of line vanities. When we make our mind to be glued to line mercies and we observe that, instead of, observe, of observing the watch of God, number two, the operation of lifetime vanities. That the life is just a lifetime a character kind of vanity and we're pursuing that that's why prayers are not answered number three the obsession with latter day vanities the latter days in which we live the obsession with latter day vanities let's come to number one number one the observation of lying vanities it says in Jonah chapter 2, reading there from verse 8, it says, They, all of them, they, whether they're in church or outside the church, they, whether they're learned or illiterate, they, whether they're black or white, they that observe lying of vanities. What's that? A kind of vain thought. A kind of vain opinion. I will run away from the presence of God, lying vanity, and then I will escape the control of the Lord. And Jonah himself said, Now I see, now I understand. They, the prophets included, they, the people included, they, they the prominent people included, they, the poor people included, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. The mercy is there all the time. The ocean of the mercy of God cannot be exhausted, but when we observe lying vanities, we forsake that mercy of God. We're coming to number two there. Number two is the operation of lifetime vanity. A person that dedicates his life to vanity, vanity, vanity. In Ecclesiastes chapter two, reading from verse one, I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure and behold also that this is vanity. When a person gives himself to pleasure, to satisfy the flesh and to satisfy the taste bud with the alcohol, with the marijuana, and with the cigarette, and with the things of this world. And the word of God says, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she is alive. When a person follows the pathway of pleasure and the pathway of earthly things and the pathway of making the, making the body useless. Now you need to understand alcohol has a negative, a negative effect on the body. Secret marijuana, they have a negative effect on the brain. And when we give ourselves to those things, now eventually Solomon discovered and he said, Behold, this also is vanity. What do you think you are enjoying of the flesh? The defilement of the flesh and the degradation and the shame of fleshly acts that you are thinking is a pleasure and yet it is the lifestyle of vanity. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 there it says, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine. And he said, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, with philosophy, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do uh, under the heaven all the days of their life like a lifestyle and then he tells us in verse 8 in verse 8 i gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces i got me men singers and women singers all alone in my court, all alone in my house, and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments, 
and that of all souls. Then he tells us in verse 10, he says, And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I desire that new lady, I, you know, Solomon said, I brought her in. I desire that field, Solomon said, I brought it in. Anything my eyes saw, whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I beheld not my I withheld not my heart from any joy, any kind of joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. That was his lifestyle. And then in verse 11, he now tells us, he says, Then I looked. On all the works of my hand. I looked on all the pleasures. I looked on all the worldly music. I looked on all the things I took, the wine and everything. I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. And on, my, on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold all. The wine. The smoke. The smoking. The marijuana. All the women, the singing, the pleasures of the world, and all. He said, behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. Let us watch the things of the world. That's what he do to the man. That the man or the woman eventually is used up. The brain, the mind, the strength. The power, the energy, everything that he has, everything was alive before, but now everything is used up. It's the lifestyle of vanities. And when people are in that condition, uh, it's one of the things, because they observe lying vanities and they observe lifestyle vanities, that's where, why prayer are not, uh, is not answered. Point number three here. In number three, the obsession with latter day vanities. Now, when we talk of obsession, it means that thing possesses somebody's life. That means that thing has swallowed up that person's desires, that person's pursuit, and that person's plan is obsessed with them. The obsession with latter day vanities. Now, the vanities are different one from the other. There's somebody that wants to travel all the world, he wants to be in every country in the world, he's obsessed with that, and he spends his life just traveling, traveling, traveling with that. Without any good outcome and he doesn't stop to ask himself for the final result what the heck Lord, did I gain from this there are other people they want to travel they want to go from woman to woman to woman a woman here a woman overseas a woman there a woman everywhere they, that's their obsession and they're not asking themselves this obsession where does it lead me to the other people is pornography and till 1 a.m. in the early morning till 2 a.m. 3 in the morning they're surfing the internet they're they're watching this and watching this and other thing comes up and they watch that they're obsessed with that there are other people that are obsessed with things that are criminal and they're obsessed with that and they do not ask themselves why am i doing this what's it yielding in my life and the thing is bringing them down it's obsession and it's only the lord that can deliver the obsession with latter day it is. It tells us in uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, uh, reading from verse 15, uh, saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities all the things that deaden the soul all the things that turn the brain all the things that 
weaken the body. All the things that blocks our vision. All the things that makes us forget our mission here on earth. It says that we cease, that we stop, that we turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are Therein, we have enough in God to keep our interest, enough in God to lift up our lives and to make us live a life, a life that is satisfactory, a life that is pleasing to God, a life that is profitable, beneficial to us in our existence here. I pray every one of us will look at our lives. If there are lying vanities, if there are lifetime vanities, if there are latter day vanities, we turn away from them and turn unto our God. And then we're going to follow the path that leads to answered prayer. Every time your life will turn around for the better. Your ministry will turn around for the better. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the spontaneousness of marvelous answers to prayer. The spontaneousness of marvelous answers to prayer in Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And look at how spontaneous, how instantaneous, how immediate the answer came from heaven. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and the Lord spake unto the fish. And the Lord spake unto the fish. The Lord speaks to everything he has created. The wind, he created the wind, he speaks to the wind. The whale, he created the whale, he speaks to the whale. And even that sickness, the Lord can speak to that sickness. The Lord speaks. And when that voice comes from heaven, the creature will obey. Man is the only one that has the challenge of not obeying. When God commanded the rain to come in the time of Noah, the rain obeyed. When God commanded drought in the time of Elijah, the drought obeyed. And when he commanded the fire to come down, the fire obeyed. And when he commanded the earthquake, the earthquake obeyed. It's only man that has the challenge. It's only man that has the volition and the free will. No, I will not. No, I will not. But you see, all the other creatures, they obeyed obeyed the Lord and the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited Jonah upon the dry land not just dry land very next to the city of Nineveh that God now could say in chapter 3 Jonah arise and go to the place I told you and preach the word I gave you spontaneous answer that's how God will answer your prayer tonight. Amen. All those things you have been crying about, and you have been crying to the Lord, Oh Lord, look at this, look at this, spontaneous answer for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, spontaneous response to the sacrifice of preeminent value the sacrifice of preeminent value i bring my heart unto you i sacrifice to your holy name the spontaneous response to the sacrifice of preeminent value number two speedy relief for the surrender with precious vows he breathes he comes again he said new days are here earlier days are here everything i vouch in the past that are taken away from the altar i bring everything now and because of that 
God responded to him with a marvelous answer to his prayer. Number three is the spectacular release from suffering. What, what a change came in the life of Jonah. He was down in the bottom of the mountains. Now he's up. He was in the sea. Now he's on dry ground. He was afraid. He was hopeless. He was helpless. But now hope and help suddenly came. A new thing happened. And he came alive again and you're coming alive again in Jesus name spectacular release from suffering by his powerful voice look at number one there number one spontaneous response to the sacrifice of preeminent value we're looking at um, we're looking at Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9 but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. He was thanking God even before the answer came. And then he said, I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Justification is of the Lord. Pardon is of the Lord. Forgiveness is of the Lord. Redemption is of the Lord. Deliverance is of the Lord. What was the Lord asking for? Give me your heart. Let your heart have the light in my ways once again. And once they said, yes, Lord, I used to say no. That's why I ran away. But now, God, you're asking for my heart. You're asking for my devotion. You're asking for my hand. You're asking for my skill. You're asking for my service. You're asking for me to fulfill the vow of the prophet. What's the vow of the prophet? Here am I. Send me. What's the vow of the prophet? I get the word from you. I go to deliver to the people you are sending me out. That vow of the prophet I had made earlier. Now I am a available and God answered him and once you do that God doesn't waste time and say Lord here I am now all I am all I have all I've learned all the resources I have they are at your disposal I will serve you your prayers immediately will be answered in Jesus name look at number two here number two is the speedy relief for the surrender with precious vows we'll come back again to that Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving I will pay I will pay God Take me at my word. This time, there's no dilly dally. This not time, there's no playing pranks with the Almighty. This time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. I will pay that that I have vowed. After all, I know that salvation is of the Lord. In Job chapter 22, Job chapter 22, reading from verse 27, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he will answer thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows, and thou shalt redeem your vows, and thou shalt make good your consecration. What will happen then? Look at verse 28. In verse 28, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Be getting ready now what you are going to decree tonight. And so Satan will not have the final say in your life. Sickness will not have the final say in your life. Problem will not have the final say in your life. The decree that you make, the declaration that you make, the demand that you make, thou shalt also decree its sin and it shall be established unto thee. Where is that thee there? I said, where is thee, the person there? Who will decree tonight? And it will be established. No shadow of doubt in my heart. Heaven is open for you now. And then it says, And the light shall shine upon 
thy ways. Amen. Amen. Look at number three here. Number three, spectacular release from suffering by his powerful voice. It tells us in Jonah chapter 2, reading from verse 10, it says, The Lord spake unto, the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah upon the dry land. Whatever I swallowed you up, will vomit you out. <laughs> Whatever has swallowed up your finance, your children, your family, whatever has swallowed up your ministry, whatever has swallowed up your company, whatever has swallowed up the work of your hand, tonight, that thing, that will, will vomit out that thing in Jesus' name. <laughs> Spectacular release release is coming for you now miracles are coming for you now the power of the almighty about to work in your life right now what are you stand up and receive stand up and receive stand up and receive and tell the lord lord here i am lord here i am lord here i am the spectacular miracle of the year in your life spectacular miracle of the hour in your life spectacular spontaneous miraculous special whatever it is in your heart whatever it is that the lord will turn everything around why don't you open your mouth and say lord here i am here i am here i am i am praying now whether you are seated whether you are standing whether you are lying down anywhere you are in any part of the world here is the day here is the time that god himself will turn everything around for the better in your life tell the lord tell the lord and make that decree and say lord you tell me to make a command a demand and you tell me to express my desire and you tell me to make the decree here i am here i am here i am i'm going to receive you are going to receive tonight anything in your life anything in your ministry, anything in your, in your family that the enemy has swallowed up, that a whale has swallowed up. This is the night will vomit everything. You'll come now on sure ground. You will come now on dry ground. You'll come now on the promised land of the Lord. Miracle tonight. Deliverance tonight, release tonight, recovery tonight, redemption tonight, righteousness tonight, and the Lord will definitely work in your life. Everything you are sorrowful about, everything that causes affliction in your life, tonight the Lord is going to reverse and is going to knock off the hand of the enemy out of your life. You are the man, you are the woman, the candidate for miracle, the candidate for the spontaneous release, and the candidate for the special miracle working power of God tonight. Surrender yourself unto the Lord and say, Lord, everything I've taken away from the altar, I surrendered in the past. I gave everything up in the past and then I'm taking them away from the altar of sacrifice. I restore my heart now for you. My time now for you. My resources now for you. I'm awakened. I'm awakened. The affliction and the problem has awakened me and now I come. And your prayer will go in unto the presence of the Lord and your prayer will have the answer miraculous the answer marvelous and the answer that is manifold of the mercy of God coming upon your life coming in your ministry tonight and you'll never 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 be the same again God still answers prayer even your own prayer. God still answers prayer. 
even your own prayer is answering you right now and you'll see the turning around and you'll see the change and you will see the fulfillment of the decree the fulfillment of the demand the fulfillment of your desire God still answers prayer In Jesus' name we pray. You know from the depth of your heart that God is a merciful God, a compassionate God, a loving God, a willing God, a ready God, and your time has now come. Raise up your hand there. Whatever the challenge already you have told the Lord, and Satan will not have the final say in your life. Sickness will not have the final say in your life. Suffering will not have the final say in your life. The Almighty God has the final say in your life. Your future is now bright. You are now on dry ground. And you are on solid ground. And everything you had lost in this time, past time, everything and much more, the Lord will restore into your life, into your family, into your ministry, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We know you are loving God, a merciful God, a compassionate God, an impartial God, as you turn the situation of Jonah around, you are turning the situation of everyone here, everyone online, everyone everywhere. You are turning every situation around right now in Jesus' name. You brought Jonah from the depths to the very height of ministry. And Lord, I pray everyone every worker every minister every bishop every pastor everyone following after you here and there and everywhere oh lord lift up everyone in jesus name bring up your people wipe away their tears take away their sorrow take away their suffering let there be a positive practical tangible visible turning around in every life now in Jesus name any sickness there whether here or any other place I command that sickness come out in Jesus name any suffering there any affliction there I command come out in Jesus name and I pray, Lord, every desire of your people, every demand of your people, every decree of your people, fulfill for everyone. Yeah. Answers to prayer. Yeah. Miraculous answers to prayer. Yeah. Spontaneous, instantaneous answers to prayer. Yeah. And Lord, let there be a chorus of amen in heaven. Yeah. That Lord... For us over here in the world, for us over here in this Alpha location, for us everywhere, all over the world, a resounding amen to every prayer in Jesus' name. Confirmation in every life, operation of miracle in every life, joy in every life. And Lord, I pray that all the things of the past, they are not buried, and now your people are out of the belly of the whale. Yeah. We will run for you now. We will labor for you now. And you bless the work of everyone's hands everywhere in Jesus' name. Your revived people will carry the revival fire everywhere and there will be revival everywhere we go. Confirm that spontaneous, spectacular miracle in every life right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.